do you know yet if Billy's going to be able to return this season? Uh, we're still kind of going through the evaluation process, but certainly we're hopeful for that. How do you feel that scared, assuming you've gone through the film, what you think of substitute Yeah, I thought Dennis did a really nice job. I thought all, all in all, up front, especially, you know, early on we had a, a few things, but I think we our guys kind of settled in and everybody up front did a, did a pretty good job. Uh, anything happened to Aaron Jones last night? Or was it just he got shaken up and you took him out? Nothing more than that. Yeah, he got he got shaken up a little bit. Um, he was fine. He was ready to go back in the game. Matt, do you think uh, just rest and rehab for Aaron's toes will be playing again this week? I have not talked to Aaron uh, today, but I'm sure that will probably be a conversation that I'll be having here shortly. Um, but, yeah, whatever he needs to be at his best for, for Sunday. Yeah, what's the optimistic end of, of Billy's situation kind of week to week, do you think? Or? Yeah, I'm not even ready to comment on that yet because we're still uh, going through the evaluation. So where do you start on special teams? I mean, the kickoff coverage is pretty decent at the end of the night, but I mean, otherwise it was one big mistake after another. Yeah, it was. there was a lot of critical mistakes, obviously. Um, you know, it, on kickoff, can't feel the pump, or feel the ball that potentially could go out of bounds, and, and we get the ball backed up there on like the five yard line. Obviously, uh, that was a, a critical mistake. Um, you know, the kickoff coverage, we just didn't do a very good job of of playing certain blocks where we got uh, two guys basically in the same gap and. Um, gave up the two big returns, and then we tried to. The, the, the other time that uh, we kicked the ball out of bounds, we tried to. Uh, their returner was cheating to our right, so Mason kicked it left, and he just, you know, pulled it a little too hard and went out of bounds. So they they got. I want to say their starting position on three consecutive drives was like the 42, the 40, and the 41 yard line. So. Um, I was pleased with it in the second half. We definitely, we covered better. Our guys did their responsibilities much better. Um, you know, punt, uh, certainly, you know, Bojo's been a, a huge addition to us. Um, but I think that there were, you know, anytime you, you get a returner like Grant out there, uh, it's dangerous if you put the ball in the middle of the field. So we got to clean that up. Um, you know, just we knew this guy was going to take it from anywhere. And there, I think the first game that he was with Chicago, they played the Raiders. And shoot, he returned a punt from five yards deep in his own end zone. So, um, and, you know, that's kind of what happened on that 97-yarder for, for a touchdown where we just, we had, again, guys not doing their responsibilities and, um, leveling out on a backside and just and that that's the kind of things that can happen and when you're playing an explosive returner like that you need everybody to be perfect and unfortunately we weren't we weren't perfect and we were far from perfect so there was a and then punt return I mean you know Amari uh, he muffed he muffed the one punt and I'll tell you what when you look at that play though watch Rasul Douglas and how he baited the gunner to run directly out of bounds without touching him. Uh, that was just a, a very savvy play by uh, such a pro. And just that is being attention to detail. And that is taking the coaching, knowing that that guy had a tendency of doing that and kind of drawing that penalty because obviously that was a pivotal penalty in the game. And you got to give Mari credit for – going back there again and fielding the next punt. And I don't know, what are you returning for, like eight yards or whatever it was, but just the resiliency we talk about of being able to bounce back from mistakes because none of us are exempt from mistakes. We're all going to make them, myself more than anybody. So um, you just got to be resilient and you got to learn from your mistakes and move, move forward and, and can't have repeat mistakes. Where did you want the ball placed? Was it a punt right or punt left? Was there a certain call that you wanted? 
No, yeah. I thought I thought the ball placement was good. We could have had a little bit more hang time. I mean, you took it from the three yard line, Rob. Like, not many guys are going to do that. Most pe people teach you don't feel that ball, um, but when you got a special talent like that, and you can field it wherever you want to field it because he's just so explosive. And we just got to do a better job. Um, certainly, I think we definitely could have had a more hang time on that. Uh, but just our guys got to do a better job in their coverage responsibilities. With Rasul, I think he only played three snaps. As good as on special teams, and he has other responsibilities. As good as a guy like that is on special teams, and some of the other guys, maybe like Allen, do you need to think about using some of those guys? Yeah, I think absolutely. I think we're getting to that point where it's all hands on deck, and, and we've really got to, um, you know, we're, we're going to have to ask guys to maybe do a little bit more. And I think Rasul is such a great example because you saw the contributions he made defensively. And then, I mean, made a, a critical play on, on that special teams. Is attrition part of the issue too, man? You mentioned, you know, Daphne's down, the EQ's down, he's been a counter for you. Uh, are the guys that are being asked to run down lanes getting enough reps, you know, as, as the backups in those kind of situations? I'm yeah, thinking. I mean, that, that's never easy, right? But. You know, for me to sit up here and, and say that it's it's going to look like a total excuse. You got to get the other guys ready to go. It's it's no different than when you have injuries on, on our offensive line. You know, guys got to step in and and be able to make plays for you. But um, I think that is something that we'll ask of some players that have played teams before that have been key contributors, and they're going to have to own maybe one phase um, just for us to. To get to where we want to go, and and we got to we we know every game is so critical, and we got to we got to take it one game at a time, and that's what we'll do. But um, yeah, I, I would say any time that you go into a game and you lose three key contributors on special teams, uh, it it does make the job more difficult, but you still got to get the job done. Matt, just to clarify though, um, we know the struggles you had in the place kicking game until recently. And your return game had been what it had been. But weren't you relatively happy with your coverage units? I'm not saying you ignore what happened last night, but is it possibly just a crappy night on, on those? Well, you got to get first and foremost. You got to give the Bears a lot of credit. I mean, they they did a great, really good job. And um, yeah, I think prior to last night they've been pretty solid. Um, but you know, you just you just don't want to just say, oh, that was just. An anomaly. That was a one-time thing. No, I, we're, we're not. We'll never approach it like that. We have got to make sure that we take every play very, very serious, and we we, we dissect it. And our coaching and and our guys are taking that coaching, and then uh, be able to go out there and make the corrections and, and apply it. I guess what I mean is, is that that's not necessarily a reflection that Mo hasn't been doing a good job in that department. Yeah, I think all our guys, again, you know, most the lead on special teams, but uh, certainly he lets Ren Renee Stewart and Connor Lewis, I mean, those guys are as involved as anybody. So it's a collective effort, just like it is on offense and defense. And um, But, yeah, it's just uh, I don't want to sit up here and defend those guys, but I, I know the work they're putting in. I would go to the meetings, and, um, you know, I'm confident in that group. Matt, isn't there a strategy uh, issue here? So, you know, on Ahorka's first punt, a 57-yarder, and he pretty much outkicked the coverage on a guy that you know is really dangerous. Um, why wouldn't the, you know, the strategy to just skyball everything, including the one down to the three-yard line, was an Aussie kick, I think. I think he had it pointed down instead of just you know, making him, making sure there was no return whatsoever. And then right before the half, you kicked off to the guy. How come he didn't squip that? Wouldn't that have been a better option than kicking it to Aver? Yeah, I mean, you can go back in hindsight, 20 is twenty twenty, right? But uh, certainly we don't want to hit line drives in the middle of the field spoon. Um, it's not what we're trying to do, so. I know, but there's a strategy, right? I mean, isn't there? Yeah, it's called, it's directional punting, and sometimes it doesn't always go the way you want it to go. <laughs> it just, like I said, nobody's nobody's perfect. And Bojo's been 
so good for us all season long. So I, I, I'm, we're lucky to have a guy like that. How close is Josh Myers uh, to returning to the practice field? I've got no updates on Josh, but and I can t other than the fact that I can tell you he's working hard every day, and you know when he's ready, he'll be out there. Hey Matt, I think uh, Devondre had the most tackles of anybody in like 20 years in that game last night. I, you know, with everything he was coming back from, what did you just think of what he gave you? You know, in that first game back. Yeah, he was he was all over the field. Uh, he did a great job, um, especially. I mean, he had basically one practice and our, our Friday practices. Um, I think we have like, I want to say it's about, uh, what is it, um, 19 reps, live reps, and the rest, the rest are jog through. So <clears throat> I think Dre did an outstanding job. You know, I, I don't know how many more times we can ask Rasul questions in different ways, but it's not like one team passed up on this guy and, and he just had one fresh start. There are like four teams in the past year that decided he wasn't good enough. How has he done this, and do you think he's earned a right to stay on the field full time, even when Jao gets back? Well, I, I mean, that's, I don't, I, we, I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but absolutely, Rasul has been a huge part of this defense. Um, I mean, he makes he makes key plays all the time, and even even the DPI that he got called for, you know, um, I thought he was just being aggressive and going to attack the football, but. Um, he just he makes key hit plays. I love how aggressive he plays. He just is a guy that he's fearless and he's resilient and um, just uh, is, is a ball hawk. He's all he, he does such a great job of studying tape, of keying receivers, their route tendencies, and that allows him to make some of the plays that he's made. Do you know what you might get out of Jerry this week practice-wise? Out of Jair, uh, not not quite yet. Um, again, we'll we'll continue to take it on a daily basis. But um, you know, I would anticipate at a bare minimum it'll be individual. Keep a rep Becker to the victory formation, and uh, how did he do? And what kind of the story was that for Kurt? Just give us a little Becker. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, matter of fact, Aaron came up to me. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I can't even talk today. Um, Aaron came up to me right before that, just wanted to make sure, you know, because it was a special occasion. He's been, um, what is it, four years in the league and, and first time dressing. So, you know, he's like, hey, can, you know, let's let Kirk take the the victory snaps. I said, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, he did, it's, it's a well-deserved honor. He works really hard, and he's been a, a really great contribution to that quarterback room. You mentioned last night that Dave could practice this week. Do you have a plan for him or Z? For this committee, um, say that one more time. You, you mentioned last night that Dave could possibly practice this week. Do you have a plan for him or Z? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's something that we've talked about with our trainers, and again, we'll we'll get to Wednesday and we'll see where he's at. But we're hopeful to to have David out there. And Matt, you know, our experiences with guys are not the same as what they're like in the locker room, obviously. But like when Zadarius and Preston were doing their brother act with their interviews with us and stuff. Obviously, Zedarius kind of dominated those. Is Preston any different this year with you guys in the locker room behind closed doors than he has been in the past? Because it sounds like the impact he had on guys, he really got their attention at halftime yesterday. Yeah, I think Pete, Pete always does that, and he's been doing that for a few years. Um, just kind of when, when we break the team down, he kind of gets the guys together and gives them uh, – a little rah rah speech, so he's been doing that for a while, though. If Turner can't play, and let's just for uh, argument's sake say that Bakhtiari can't play, who's your third tackle? Is it Braden? Yeah, at this point, uh, it would it would be Ben. So you did mention a little bit last night that you had to adjust your play calling a little bit with the line, you know, particularly like, like right when Dennis came in? Yeah, I think it was just early on, just making sure that, you know, you got a guy that's coming up cold off the bench. You just want to try to get him acclimated as quickly as possible. Yeah, so every time there's been a lack of change on the offensive line, have you had to alter what your strengths are um, offensively? So you got a kind of a different guy in, in um, Yash than you have in Elton. 
right? And, and a different guy in Kelly than you have in Turner? Is that tactical? Yeah, I think it's more, you know, you, you always try to play to the skill, skill set of your players or the strengths of, of their skill sets. Um, but, you know, as far as each guy's a little bit different in, in what you want to ask them to do, and you, you always want to try to put your players in the best position possible. But I think for anybody that comes in in a situation like that, especially when you're more in, into, like, especially a drop-back mode, I would say, um, you want to just get them a couple reps where hopefully you can get the ball out of the quarterback's hands pretty quickly. So when you replaced or had to replace uh, Josh Myers, six five guy with, you know, big athletic guy with Lucas Patrick, does that change the strength of what you guys do in the run game or pass uh, game? Yeah, or potentially at times, absolutely. And But, that, but that's something that uh, you kind of – you usually have enough variety within a game plan where you can easily pivot if, you know, if, to account for situations like that. Hey, Matt, did you, um, <clears throat> Lazard's production was kind of up and down up until last night. I know you love him for the goon stuff that he does, but was there a difference yesterday in his role and how nice was it to get him more involved? Yeah, I thought Allen did a great job. He, he did exactly, uh, he went out there and executed. And um, certainly his number got called more, I would say. He just, he had more opportunities, but he made the most of those. Um, even some that maybe we unexpectedly went to him based on how the defense played. But yeah, I thought he did a really nice job, but I thought he had a, a really good week of practice. And I think that's where it starts for all our guys. You know, we, we, we always talk about practice preparation equals game reality. And so it is important for the guys to, to approach practice the right way, just, uh, you know, me both mentally and then making sure you're working your technique the right way. So I think that really gives guys confidence when they go, get out in the game to go out there and, and play at their best. Do one more in here. Royce is kind of your last man standing of your starting five. Um, how have you thought he's played like the last month? I know we talked to Steno, I don't know, a month, month and a half ago, and he talked about his inconsistency, and it seems like maybe he's gotten past that. Yeah, I thought this was Royce's best game by far. So uh, hopefully, you know, again, you're only as good as your last game, and you got to keep attacking it the, the same way on a daily basis, and hopefully he keeps stacking these practice days and gets better and better and better. Oh, let's go to Zoom. Sarah, go ahead. Claire. Coach, uh, fun watching it from the stands last night. Something I noticed in person that you don't really see on the broadcast is when you guys are in a TV timeout, the offense is out there with the line and the QB, but you're holding your skill position players back, whether they're the backs and wide receivers, etc. I don't know if they're huddled around you or the position coach, what have you, but is that a tactic thing where you're keeping the defensive coordinator guessing as long as possible until you send them out there so they get beat on what you're trying to do? Yeah, I would say sometimes it absolutely is, Aaron. And then other times I think those guys want to keep the coats on as long as they can. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one, Ryan Wood. Hey, Matt. I'm curious, assuming the goal is for David to be playing at max capacity by playoffs, are you running out of time to accomplish that with just four weeks left? How long is the ramp-up time for a guy not to just be able to play? But the play like himself? Well, I think every individual is a little bit different. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that we're going to take it a, a day at a time. And when he's ready to go, he will be out there because there's nobody that wants to be out there more than Dave.